Good evening to the Honorable Minister of Finance, the President, Board of Governors, and Committee Chairs of the CFA Society Nigeria, distinguished guests, and the new holders. And um, I know she won't like this, but um, I would also say good evening to our incoming Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, my dear sister Aisha. <laughs> First and foremost, warm congratulations to all the new charter holders on your induction tonight. I would like to thank Mr. Banji Faintola, President of the CFA Society in Nigeria, and Vice President Ibuko Yedeji for inviting me to speak at this event, and most importantly, on a subject matter that is very dear to me. I'm involved in a number of organizations and charities that focus on the empowerment of women, not only in banking and the investment sector, but in the economy as a whole. So tonight I've been invited to join you in a two-fold celebration, just as Banji said, which I personally believe to be laudable feats. The first is the induction ceremony of your new colleagues who have all invested their time, energy and resources towards gaining this prestigious charter. The second, and more importantly for me, is the launch of the CFA Women in Investment Initiative in Nigeria. To the new charter awardees of the CFA Society in Nigeria, I commend your commitment and grit in pursuing and attaining this achievement. And indeed, there have been occasions when um, I either haven't seen a colleague in the bank for a while, or I bump into somebody on, in the lift, and they're looking frazzled. And I say, oh, I haven't seen you for a while. Where have you been? They say, oh, I'm doing CFA. So I think, I think now, now I, know, I know why. You know, that there's, there's a price to pay for that prize. The CFA Institute is one of the most influential and prestigious professional bodies globally, especially renowned for its commitment to high ethical standards in the conduct of all aspects of investment management. On the launch of the CFA Women in, Man in Investment Management initiative, permit me to share a few thoughts. I'm sure you've all heard the joke that if Lehman Brothers, the failed US firm synonymous with the global financial crash, had actually been named Lehman sisters, there would have been no crash at all. <laughs> so I'm sure many of us are thinking, isn't all this women in investment management stuff really much ado about nothing? Why the emphasis on gender diversity rather than other forms of diversity at, at this time? And with all the noise around gender diversity in the workplace, has the impact of gender diversity been successfully and empirically measured? Well, in my personal experience, I will say that it is indeed much ado about some very important and significant things, one being the imperative to increase the ranks of women who are CFA. The inherent intuitive nature of women and our ability to manage money and risk, be it in the home, be it a petty trader, small-scale businesswoman, or even a multi-million dollar businesswoman, enables us to creatively stretch our resources especially during hard times, to cover more than what is expected. And I'm sure many ladies here will probably find their husbands asking them, but I only gave you so much, how come you were able to do, to do you know, as much as you have? So let's think about it. What are some of the characteristics of a good investment manager? A non-exhaustive list, but I'm sure you know, on tables they'll be whispering, but there are many more. But a non-exhaustive list would include understanding your market, being skilled at spotting opportunities, the ability to drown out the noise even when the overwhelming sentiment suggests otherwise, being patient, even being a contrarian, dealing well with mistakes, and not looking for short-term results. And then what about intuition, creativity, introspection, decisiveness? Don't these already sound like the characteristics of a typical woman? I think they do. I believe that diversity of gender, especially in the leadership ranks, brings perspectives that enrich and enhance the quality of the output within the workplace, in this instance, an investment management company. These are perspectives which may have been missed otherwise without the benefit of diverse experiences. I've had personal experiences in my career where being the only woman at the table, I brought unique viewpoints into conversations, viewpoints which my male colleagues would never have considered. The view through my prism of life was kaleidoscopic considering how multifaceted the life of a woman is compared to that of a man. And I even discovered that some gender discriminatory workplace practices were not intentionally created, but happened inadvertently because the policymakers were typically men 
and they just didn't know otherwise the adverse impact that these policies would have on their female staff. Where, organi where an organization is serious about the diversity of perspectives that accrue from having women adequately represented, it increases the chances of even financial outperformance. And indeed, there is emerging data from recent studies by the likes of McKinsey, the FT, Catalyst, Mercer, and HBS to suggest that diversity brings a boost to profit profitability. Given the fact that the CFA is gradually gaining ground, particularly in Nigeria and, and in many countries across the world, as the de facto requirement for the investment management industry, probably replacing the MBA over time as, as the be all and end all, it is very important that more women seek this qualification to increase the diversity of women in investment management and ultimately to help improve investor outcomes. The broad range of opportunities to a CFA, whether working as a research analyst, portfolio manager, financial advisor, relationship manager, risk manager, or even as I said earlier, deputy governor of our esteemed Central Bank of Nigeria, means that having the qualification not only broadens one's versatility in the workplace, but also expands one's career horizon and potentially positively impacts the pocket as well, i.e. compensation. But then I read somewhere that it takes four years on average to complete the program, six months of preparation on the average for each exam, and as much as 300 hours of study time to become a CFA. Wow. By my reckoning, <laughs> it would take a really determined person, male or female, to set the time aside to pursue such a rigorous course of study for a professional certification. Ladies and gentlemen, please recall my earlier comment about a typical working woman's multifaceted life. So she's a daughter, maybe a sister, add to that maybe a wife. She may have children, even twins like I do. Most working women have domestic staff, that's another story. And then a working woman typically also is a cook. And then so she manages her job objectives at work during the day. She also, also has to manage her home objectives in the house in the evening. These duties and responsibilities do not yet include the extended family issues she probably has to contend with. And if she's community oriented, a working woman also has to stretch herself to participate in charitable endeavors. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me. Where would she have the time for 300 hours of study and six months to prepare for each exam? How would she ever earn the CFA charter? So in order to deliberately ensure a pipeline of female investment management talent, Organizational people management policies must be in place to help female staff overcome the barriers that typically constrain their ability to advance their careers. As the CFA Institute builds the business case for diversity in your profession, and I think you know, Banji shared some of that uh, just now, the percentages in terms of the uh, charter holders today and the number of CFA in Nigeria, it's encouraging but still low. So as you build your business case for diversity and to improve investor outcomes, the launch of Women in Investment Management Initiative is highly commendable and should be applauded. However, there is a lot of work to be done besides encouraging women to take action and sign up for the CFA program. I believe that the CFA Society in Nigeria must focus on advocacy to achieve improved and appropriate workplace practices that will facilitate the commitment of time and resources by female employees to pursue the CFA charter. Policies such as flexible working arrangements and extended maternity leave, for example, can help women organize their non-work commitments to support their career ambitions and opportunities. Please permit me to share with you what we do at Standard Charter to encourage our people to have a life. We offer various flexi working arrangements so our people can choose part-time work, flexible work, you can work from the nearest branch to your home, or you can actually work from home. And recently, we extended our maternity leave from four months to five months paid leave with an option <laughs> five months paid leave with an option of an additional unpaid one month off. Please, please be careful, don't rush me with CVs, huh, tonight. <laughs> I haven't finished, I haven't finished. We also recently, we, we, um, what was I saying here? Standard Chartered also offers adoption leave and paternity leave as well. So we are a very family-friendly employer. 
Indeed, the outcome of our pro-work-life policies is a very gender-diverse organization. Four of the board of nine directors are women, 10 of my 16 strong executive management team members are women. And some of the roles that these women occupy include Chief Risk Officer and Executive Compliance Officer, Chief Financial Officer, Chief Information and Technology Officer, and Key Business Heads. Uh, it, it's not my doing. It, it, it's merit-driven, so it just happens this way, but we, we tend to retain a lot of our women in the bank. And I dare say our, our financial performance has been outstanding, and our cost-income ratio at below 40% is one of the lowest in the banking industry. So could it possibly be as a result of the kaleido kaleidoscopic perspectives I mentioned earlier? Maybe. I think so. So, Mr. Feintola. We would be happy to share some of our diversity and inclusion strategies with the CFA as you lobby organizations to ensure that they have family-friendly policies and help their female staff embark upon and succeed in the CFA program. And indeed, on a case-by-case -case basis as well in the bank, we have paid for and will continue to pay for those who want to pursue the CFA charter. So I wish you the best with the Women in Management, in Investment Management Initiative. However, before I close, I think um, I've been talking about the enterprise side solutions, and I now want to talk to the women in the room. So women, let us quit the self-limiting beliefs and assumptions. I can't take that job. I may not be able to juggle it with my family commitment. I have to ask my husband first. My mother-in-law will say I'm too ambitious. Please, let's stop all this nonsense. These beliefs and assumptions do not serve us well in planning for and extracting value from our careers. We also do not put up, they also do not put us in a win-win frame of mind where we are able to effectively identify workarounds to our constraints and seek help and or guidance that can help us take advantage of opportunities. Our multitasking lives involve significant sacrifices and trade-offs between our work, our aspirations and our home lives. As I say to people, work-life balance, it rarely balances. I don't want to say never balance. It rarely, it certainly doesn't balance for me, but it rarely balances for most people. The pendulum is always swinging. And there is it also a price that we need to pay for that price. And I know that the ladies who are going to receive the, the CFA charter today have paid a great price. So my strong advice is this. You must first be purposeful and know what you want. You must invest in yourself. You need to sharpen the saw. Investment in yourself promotes self-empowerment. Take charge of your careers. Seek out a sponsor who will bat for you when opportunities arise and have your back when things are tough. Men, now to the men. Here's where you can support this initiative. It's important that you deliberately coach, mentor, promote, sponsor, and ensure women's visibility where you work. It may take some getting used to, to understand the specific challenges, but when you commit to being champions for all talent, especially female talent, you create better environments for women to raise their hands and come to the table to deliver the value they carry. And a recent example was when I was invited to speak at a women's network uh, in a bank. There were actually more men in the room than there were women. Most of the questions were asked by the men, and it just, you know, it, it was very encouraging that it was an organization where the men wanted to really understand the issues and challenges of women in their workplace and I'm sure that on that on that day they were much the wiser for it so I would I'm concluding now um, I would say that career negotiation is less straightforward for women than it is for men so helping our male colleagues understand the unique circumstances of their female counterparts and working with them to chart the course of their careers that allow for satisfaction across various life commitments is a significant starting point by no means is a call to promote gender diversity an attempt at women taking over the world, even though I think Beyonce reminds us that we can and we should. But instead, it is a call to challenge ourselves to take advantage of the true value of the diverse resources that workplaces have. It is a call to overcome conscious and unconscious biases towards women in the workplace, 
It is a call to increase the pool of role models of different genders so that coming generations can aspire beyond the boundaries of stereotypes. So to the CFA Society, as this initiative is launched in Nigeria, as I believe has been done in other jurisdictions, I encourage you all to come together and commit to seeing the wealth of perspectives that women do bring and to extract the va that value for shared satisfaction. At the end of the day, I believe we are, in, we are amidst a cultural shift towards better inclusivity. It, must much, it took much more effort for the, for the women before us and it will take extra effort for women today. It is essential that we seize the opportunity and make much good of the chances before us through education, mentoring, implementing policies, and most importantly, zeal and hard work, finding those six months and 300 hours. I firmly believe that when women do better, economies do better as well. So finally, congratulations once again to the new charter holders, the class of 2017. Good wishes to the CFA Society Nigeria as you launch the Women in Investment Management Initiative. And I thank you all for listening. Thank you very much.